Hey guys, welcome to the basic starter guide to HDB networking. This is a much requested video from you guys, so here it is. Before we move on with the video, here's a message from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Home Trust, Singapore's leading interior design portal. Looking for an interior designer for your home? Fret not. Home Trust allows you to find unbiased reviews and design ideas from the best interior designers in Singapore. Simply select your house type, budget, and desired style, and you will find tons of IDs that will fit your criteria. You can easily browse pictures of completed projects and read customer reviews on the different IDs before making your big decision. Head on over to HomeTrust.sg or click the link in the description box below to find out more. Now back to the video. Um, this guide aims to be newbie friendly and therefore we are not going to go super in depth to the different intricacies of networking like measuring signal strength and all those. It is also going to be a super long topic and um, it, may be get, it may get a little bit dry. So you'll split into chapters and different parts so you can kind of skip around the video if you just want to know certain things. I'm also going to use oversimplified terms so that most people can understand. Uh, the terms may or may not be 100% accurate because I try to oversimplify it, right? But it will help with the general audience without much networking knowledge. So uh, if you have a little bit of networking background or kind of know what you're doing with your home network, then this video is probably not for you. I'm going to list the resources down below. Um, so without further ado, let's go through some of the terms that let me come up briefly throughout the whole video so that we are on the same page. Uh, first up, it's the termination point or also known as the fiber termination point. It's built in by HDB and it looks something like this. Basically, this is how your house gets connected to the whole fiber network. To put it in simple layman terms, this is where the internet comes from, the ISP to your house. Internet service providers or ISPs are the companies where we all get our internet from. So throughout the whole video, when we mention ISP, it refers to the companies like Singtel, Starhub, M1, my Republic, ViewQuest, and some others. Uh, some disclaimer, the, um, in this whole video, there will be no internet service provider comparison. So there's no like red ISP is better, green is better kind of thing. Uh, okay, next is what we call the optical network terminal or the ONT, uh, more commonly known to like lay people as the modem. It looks like, uh, it, looks, it looks just like a black box most of the time. And what it does is that you will take the optical or fiber signals from the fiber termination point and then it translates to something that your other devices like your router, your, your network switches can understand. And then the next one is the router, specifically wireless routers, because a majority of the people, when they think of router as it will be wireless router and it looks something like this. Uh, what it does is that it takes the data provided by the ONT uh, as previously mentioned and then it forwards them to different devices that are connected to it. Uh, either wirelessly via Wi-Fi or by physical Ethernet cables or LAN cables. Once more note about the ONTs and routers, some companies decided to opt for optical network routers or ONRs which are a combination of ONTs and routers as mentioned above instead of providing them as two separate devices. You can consider them as a router in the video. Finally, we also have the mesh network. So the mesh network, or also known as the mesh Wi-Fi, consists of a main mesh router and then one or more nodes placed around the house that makes up the whole mesh Wi-Fi. Um, this usually comes in packs of two or three. So like, so it looks like this. Uh, the main difference between this and the other wireless router or the traditional one is that the traditional router is more centralized and all your devices around the house will have to connect to the single router but the mesh wi-fi because it has nodes spread around the house you are able to connect to the one closest to you instead and this in turn may cause uh may, may provide you with a more stable connection as compared to using the traditional router Okay, with all the terms out of the way, let's continue on with the video. Some small disclaimer, uh, I'm taking the context of a new HDB BTO where you haven't started renovation for the, the next few sections uh, because this is the best time to get all the networking stuff out of the way. Before you even think of which ISP to go for, how many gigabits per second plans you are going to sign up for, we have to think of the physical constraints of the house first. 
So, so picture this, right? You just sign the last of the HDB documents. You have the keys from HDB and pre they are preparing to talk to an ID for the whole renovation process. I'll suggest taking some time out of the whole planning and then to just think about the networking as well. This should also work well with IDs during their ideation stage so they can take these into consideration before starting work. So stuff like um, if you're going to shift certain uh, data points, you're going to uh, put your routers here, you're going to put something there. Um, so, okay, the first thing to do before for this whole requirements gathering process is to have the floor plan right in front of you. So from this plan, you pick the top two to three rooms where there's going to be the most internet activity in your opinion. So say you think the living area is going to be one of them because you want to watch Netflix or YouTube on a TV. And when you have friends and family over and everyone uses their phones to scroll the socials, it easily becomes one of the areas with the highest internet activity in your house. So pick one to two more rooms around the house for this exercise to see clearly where you need to cater good internet connections for. Another thing to consider is the need for physical internet connection or LAN connection around the house. The HDB has kindly provided the newer BTOs with LAN connections in each room, even the bomb shelter as well. All of the data points are properly labelled and conveniently connected to the DB box labelled D1 to D6 for us, but different houses will probably have it differently. I strongly suggest just shifting the data points around instead of removing it entirely. If you are planning to put a shelf in front of a data point, you can just shift the point and not close it off, mainly just because of future proofing. So for example, right now you would think that maybe only the living room and your study needs a data point. 5 to 10 years down the road, say you want to convert the room to another home office or if your child grows up and they want to have a desktop PC to play games, they are going to be limited to using Wi-Fi and probably even poor Wi-Fi if there's not enough planning for it. Having a data point allows an easy addition of newer devices should there ever be a need for it. So to summarize what I just mentioned for requirements gathering, first grab your floor plan, identify the top two to three rooms with the highest internet activity, and identify where the data points are around your house. Highly suggested to not remove any data points but to plan the shifting of the data points with your ID. Write all of it down so you don't forget. Once we have gathered the requirements, we can start to plan what devices will be suitable for the setup. Because this video is getting a bit too long, we are going to split the video to three parts. We have gone through the first part which is understanding the basic terminology and gathering requirements. In the next video, we are going to explore a few standard home networking setups and options while keeping the above requirements in mind. Like this video if it helped you, hit the notification bell and subscribe so you don't miss the next installment. Do also share it with your friends or family if you think this video will benefit them. See you in the next video. Bye.